Once upon a time, in a galaxy far, far wait, it ain't that far. It's right here. It's a big blue planet Earth. A planet, as y'all know, is made out of water, land, and air. So let's take a closer look at it. When scientists study the Earth, we break kind of break it down into the atmosphere, the hydrosphere, the biosphere, and the lithosphere. All right, let's look at the atmosphere. The atmosphere is the air. It can be broken into smaller bits or spheres from the, like the troposphere, the stratosphere, the mesosphere, the thermosphere, and the exosphere. But we ain't interested about most of these spheres except for the troposphere and the stratosphere. The stratosphere is mainly where the ozone layer is at and is where planes fly. And that's all we really need to know about the ozone because we know what ozone kind of does, right, to protect us. And it's in the stratosphere. We'll talk more about those later. And now we're going to focus on the troposphere. Troposphere is from the sea level or the ground level all the way up 12 kilometers into space. So this is where weather happens when it rains, when it gets cloudy, and when thunderstorms come down. It all happens in the troposphere. Now, about 50% of our atmosphere is concentrated between the sea level to up to 5.6 kilometers in the sky. And if the sky is air within this 5.6 kilometers, the air is clean, about 78% of it is nitrogen gas, and 21% of it is oxygen gas. Then the rest of the 1% is made out of argon, carbon dioxide, methane, and blah, 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 blah gases. All right? That's what we need to know about the atmosphere. Now, we can kind of combine the lithosphere and the biosphere together because what I'm really interested in is not about all the living things, but about how us humans affect our world around us. If we look at our world, it has lots of animals and plants, right? And all these are part of the study of the biosphere, where all living things occur, all right? Where all living things are living, basically, right? From down at the sea floor, all the way up in the air. But what I really want us to focus on is the land part of it, because we humans walk on land, unless you like to swim, or you have fins, or you have wings, then, you know, let me know. It's kind of cool. But for now, let's just focus on the land. Now, we are humans. Well, all living things need nutrients, right? And plants are the first source of nutrients, where uh, plants are the first step in where nutrients are absorbed into all living matter, okay? And plants need three things, N, P, K, nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Now for like the longest time, men, when men grew or people grew plants and harvested crops, for the longest time, we let nature do the job, all right? And we may kind of introduce organic fertilizers to our farms, right? Because we noticed that it kind of helps plants grow better. But because nitrogen is such an important part of all living matter, it's practically in all of our, in all of our DNAs, it's the N in all the amino acids, 
it should be relatively easy to get useful nitrogen, right? Because 78% of the atmosphere has nitrogen. But wait, you gotta get one fact right. Even though 78% of all air has nitrogen, this nitrogen comes in the form of nitrogen gas. It's very stable, it's very inert, it doesn't react very easily. And so, in nature, bacteria and lightning can convert useless nitrogen to us living things into something more useful. And it was only recently when a German by the name of something, Harbour, Mr. Harbour, he created a synthetic process to convert nitrogen and hydrogen gas into ammonia, which is a precursor for all the fertilizers that we make today, synthetic fertilizers that we make today. Uh, Harbour actually wanted to make ammonia so that he can mass produce bombs for Germany. And the weird thing was that he was a Jew too, and so then he got kicked out of the German Science Academy. But while his intention was to kill lots of people, after the World War, he and his method ended up saving lots of lives. And it all started through the Green Revolution, where the modernization of all agricultural equipment, processing and management, modernization as well, the excessive use of fertilizers and pesticides has all helped us achieve far greater yields in our crops than ever, ever imagined. Right. And finally, we're going to talk about the hydrosphere. The hydrosphere is basically everything on the planet that has water from the sea to about 12 kilometers in the sky, where weathering occurs, okay? And we know that 70% of the Earth's surface is covered by water mass, right? Whether it's in the poles, on the mountains, in the rivers, or in the ocean, all right? About 70% of it is water. But out of all this water mass, 97% of it is seawater, and only 3% of it is fresh water. But not all that fresh water is useful to us. Why? Because 70% of that 3% of fresh water is in the form of ice. The ice that is all up here in the mountains and the polar regions. And 29% of fresh, of the 3% of fresh water that's available, 29% is inaccessible to us humans. We can't use it because we can't get to it. And less than 1% of fresh, all fresh water is accessible to humans. Can you realize how precious, how precious, how precious water is? 